thanks everyone for coming. It's it's great to have you here in a very pink afternoon. Well done, Sally. Now it's turned like absolutely pink out there. It's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> And so today in this very sort of like dark times, it's perfect for talking about Christmas and bringing in some cheer. And we have amazing speakers today. Uh, Kay is gonna be speaking, is gonna be walking us through how to make a successful uh, marketing campaign, including social media, which I know is something really important, but I struggle with it. So I'm really looking forward to that. Louise um, is gonna be talking to us about the platform and how to make the most out of it. There's lots of really interesting things that you can be doing with the EuroFN platform. Uh, to make the most of your Christmas trade, and it's great to have her just walk us through it. Without further ado, Kay, are you ready to get started and tell us everything that we need to know about social media and marketing? Excellent. Yeah, I'm ready to go. So my name's Kay, and I'm a sustainable food marketing specialist, and I'm going to talk today a bit about um, some hints and tips for your Christmas marketing. Um, so we go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So first of all, I want to say that um, there's a lot of research that shows shopper activity is massively affected by the Christmas season and we all know that from what we see happening in the shops around Christmas. So one thing we do know is that our, our customers really care about Christmas. So that means that by us doing relevant seasonal marketing, um, you can really show your customers that you care about what they care about and therefore that you care about them. So, and this really helps to build stronger relationships and generate more customer loyalty and trust in the long run. And with everything going on at the moment with the pandemic and further lockdowns, we all know this is gonna be a very different kind of Christmas for lots of people. So it's really important at the moment to really connect with your customers um, through all of the tools that you have, through social media, through email, through whatever, forever what, through whatever you're already doing with your marketing um, and show them that you really understand what's going on for them at the moment. So if you go to the next slide, please. This takes me to my first tip, um, and this is across all of the communications that you're putting out for your marketing efforts. And that's wherever you can try to spread Christmas cheer. So it's been a really challenging and tough year for most of us. So if you can help your customers end the year on a, on a really positive note, um, it will be a really worthwhile thing to do. Um, from the words of the great Maya Angelou, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. So with this in mind, consider how you can spread Christmas cheer in these challenging times through your social media in particular here. So any content that you put out, um, ask yourself before you post it, is it entertaining? And what I mean by this is, is it readable? Is it fun? Is it imaginative? Does it make people laugh? Don't be afraid to use humor in your social media. Of course, this is like, that's a totally subjective thing. Humor means different things to different people. Um, but you'll get to know what works for your customers, and I'm sure you already have a good idea of what your customers find funny. Um, a really nice example of this actually was um, last year when Tamar Valley Food Hubs did a really lovely social post, which was Sarah Rock dressed as an elf, reading a lovely poem written by another member of the team, Rachel. So this is a really nice example of a team coming together to create a really engaging, lovely, humorous, good vibe post that got really good engagement and was a really nice kind of way to put a human face behind Tamar Valley Food Hubs for, for their audience and customers. So it's a nice idea. And the other thing to ask yourself, is it emotional? Does it provoke emotion? And what I mean by this is, does it reach your audience or your customer on a personal or deeper level? Does it make them feel something? Right, wherever you can on social media, try and write content which helps your customers form a personal or emotional connection with your enterprise. So for example here, um, if you share human stories about your producers, growers, team members, um, this is a way to put a human face to your enterprise, which helps your customers to connect with more with what you're doing and who you are. And also just a point to say on this slide, that's fine. Um, but a point before is just also here for Christmas cheer, you can invest a little time into creating Christmas imagery for your enterprise. And this is really worth it because you can keep using that year after year after year. And Louise is going to talk a bit more about that um, a bit later. So my next tip is to make sure you're looking after new customers. And what I mean by this is that many hubs, and I'm sure you might have seen this happen for you too, um, see an influx of new customers over the Christmas season. And one way to convince new customers to stay is to really help them feel like they belong. 
So make a point of looking at things from their point of view and review, for example, you can review their shopping experience with you. Make it as clear as you possibly can how your customers can buy from you. Don't let them feel uninformed. You might think that it's obvious, but there's actually a very real block um, for new customers to try new things. So be as explicit as you can. Um, a really nice kind of quick and simple way of doing this is to explain your process really clearly. And you can do this in a social media post, which you could pin to your um, feed, or you can have this on your Shopfront notices page if you have an OFN Shopfront. And it, lots of research shows that a step-by-step -step guide is a really quick and easy way to explain something clearly and simply. So for example, you can have step one, visit our online shop here have a link that takes people directly to where you want them to go. So it's just as easy a process as possible. Step two, place your order and check out. You can walk through this yourself and see if there's any points in this process that feel a little bit tricky or might need a bit of extra explanation. Be really explicit. And step three, collect your delicious fresh vegetables on give a date and from here give your address. On this step, you can be really clear about what customers can expect. So. Yeah, it's just remembering that the answer to confusion for your customers is almost always going to be no. And it's a bit of a cheesy phrase, but if you confuse, you lose. <laughs> I don't know where that's come from and it's pretty cheesy, so I'm sorry about that. But it's just, yeah, give new customers an idea of what to expect. If you can, if you can tell them what to expect from a collection point, what they might see, where to go, as in detail as you possibly can, that's a really good thing to do. And it's a kind thing to do for new customers. Um, and it's just part of trying to understand the way that new customers first experience your hub. Um, and through this as well, you can consider new ways to improve your onboarding process for new customers. And for example, after, after a first purchase or after purchases, your customers will trust you more if they have a better impression of you in the first few interactions with you. So for people, so for example, if you have a veg box, it might be the first time for this new customer that they've bought a veg box before. So in which case you could offer helpful advice, share recipes or explain how to prepare tricky vegetables. And this example in the photo here, if you can guess what that is. <laughs> I've struggled with this one before. Um, if you go to the next slide, please. Thanks, Louise. So this, what I mean here, and this is a, a tip for both new customers and also your current customers. And that's with in any way that you can foster a sense of belonging. And that's because belonging is a core motivation and a foundational human need, which we all strive for. And there's a diagram here called Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, which shows where love and belonging fits in that hierarchy. Um, at the moment, well, most customers are what we call hyper-empowered customers when it comes to food, which means they've got a lot of different choice, a multitude of different supermarkets, et cetera, et cetera. So they show a little, little loyalty to businesses unless they feel like they belong to something. So in any way that you can help your customers feel like they belong. And in the next slides, I talk a bit about how you can do that. So you can help your customers feel like they're part of something bigger. And in our case, that's the alternative food movement or the new food movement or a better food movement. And going back to the kind of spreading positivity, it's when you're talking about this or if you're using this in your social media messaging, make sure that you come at it from a really positive angle. So talk um, about what we're doing and why it's great and rather than that, what other people are doing and why that's rubbish kind of thing. So veer on the side of positivity. Also, you can show your customers that you share the same values and care about the same issues they do. So yeah, and the reward for doing that is that you'll get really highly engaged customers um, who are advocates for what you do um, and who will naturally want to shop with you and talk about you as well. So get really clear on what issues you authentically identify with as a business. Agree, perhaps as a team, on what issues you want to align yourself with and also how you're gonna communicate that. Don't be afraid to express what you believe in. And if you are uncomfortable about speaking on this topic yourself or posting about it on social media, a social media tip is to share what other that people are saying, um, share content from other accounts who align with your values. And this is a really nice kind of bit of social love that you can do for other accounts who are on the same wavelength as you. And also this has positive algorithm, a uh, positive algorithm effect as well, because the more that you're sharing other accounts posts, the better that, for example, Facebook sees your account as more kind of 
community minded and therefore you're seen by more people. So it has a positive knock on effect as well as supporting the causes that you believe in as a business. And yeah, and also in the long run, sharing your values um, with your customers leads to a deep promotional attachment to your enterprise. And that will help you to generate more customer loyalty and help to retain, for example, your new customers and keep your longer your current customers for longer. Uh, next slide, please. And this is a really similar point, but it also helps to make sure that your customers feel understood by you. So what I mean by this is take time to consider what your customers might be missing out on this year in these strange times that we're all finding ourselves in. What do they need and, and what do they want? What might they be going through? It's having this in mind, having, getting into the practice of constantly thinking about things from your customer's point of view. And particularly at the moment, customer confidence is at an all time low. There's lots of concerns around cleanliness. Um, people are going through a lot of financial worries and yeah, and, and, and lots of just collective anxiety at the moment. And many customers are gonna be remembering who helped them during the last lockdown and supermarkets felt like perhaps unsafe territory for many people. So what you want to do is through your kind of social media messaging is really help your customers to feel safe and secure shopping with you. And this is also through all of your, your messaging. So you could, for example, share what your COVID policy is, talk about the steps that you're taking to keep people safe. And when it comes to financial concerns, you could, if it makes sense for you and your enterprise to, to really focus your messaging on the value that you provide for money. Um, and also it's important through what you're saying on social media and through email or what you're putting out to your customers is to really gauge the mood of your customers because traditionally Christmas campaigns are usually all about gathering together with friends and family to enjoy good food. And this kind of messaging is, is challenging and potentially um, could, be, could even be upsetting for some people um, in the times that we're finding ourselves in, because we just don't know what's gonna happen with the lockdown restrictions this year. So think kind of outside of that, of different things that you can say. So instead of family messaging, for example, you could, you could focus on enjoying treats at home, um, sending edible gifts to loved ones, um, finding comfort in holiday cheer or um, highlighting comfort food and treats and this kind of thing. Um, next slide, please. Cool. And another tip is wherever you can, um, try to use personalization in what you're doing. Um, so one way to do this is going the extra mile for your customers. And I'm sure a lot of you have done that it throughout the whole COVID experience. But it's also through kind of November and December, it's remembering that going the extra mile for your customers helps to build long-term loyalty. And perhaps things that aren't sustainable for you to do throughout the year, you might be able to get away with doing them as an enterprise over November and December, just in the lead up to Christmas. Um, and you can also perhaps identify, this could be a chance to help um, perhaps your lapsed customers to come back on board with you. So identify customers who haven't purchased anything for a while and reconnect with them, check that they're okay. It's that personal touch of, of, of speaking to your customers is always a good thing. And also, yeah, how can you recognize your customers in unexpected ways? There's lots of different ways to do that. It's sit down with a pen and paper for 10 minutes and force yourself to think of some ideas. The first two might be difficult, but after you've written down three, you might find that they come a bit easier. Um, and then you can, you'll come up with things that are unique for you and work well for your customers. And you could, something simple you could try as a Christmassy seasonal or a simple thank you email or handwritten note um, in, in someone's order or in their box. Um, to make it a bit more inclusive, it could be something like happy winter holidays. And also, yeah, it's just anything that you can do to make your customers experience personal with you at this time um, is, is, is a good marketing approach. And next slide, please, Louise. Thanks. So I'm sure you're all doing this already, um, but wherever you, wherever you can make the most of your community, and this is both online and, and offline, and through not just through social media, but just generally in every way that you can encourage word of mouth in your communities. Engaging your customers and building great relationships is a really good time marketing time investment. And that's because when your customers are happy and engaged with what you're doing, they're, they're going to naturally become advocates and want to share their enthusiasm for your enterprise with their friends and family who are very likely to be 
on a similar wavelength and likely to buy from you. And also people, there's lots of research that shows that people trust recommendations from friends and family more than any other type of promotional advertising. And that's a great reason to encourage word of mouth in your communities. And you can start with team members and volunteers and your friends and family, for example, with this, just, just sometimes just asking people, can you please spread the word? And um, you'll be surprised at these little simple steps that help to help to kind of boost your, boost your, your presence. And also consider who your best customers are. And if you've got a really strong relationship, don't be afraid to ask them to spread the word for you. And most people are really happy to help. And it ha it's again, it's going back to that, helping people feel good. Like people feel good when they're helping a, a, a cause that they care about. So it's just, if you've got a good relationship with a customer, don't be afraid to ask them um, to help you by spreading the word about what you're doing. And also in addition, if you wanna take this online, the whole word of mouth, wonderful effect, gather kind of testimonials and reviews, and then you can put that online and it's, it's yeah, it's giving positive social proof um, online through the, through, so it's essentially as a word of mouth online, you put a review or a testimonial up. So that's another good thing that you can do at this time. So, and my last point, and I realize I've squeezed quite a lot of points into this one little slide, but it's to think ahead. Um, so thinking now in November about different things that you can do for gift ideas, um, because, yeah, specialist food and drink purchases are perfect for gifting solutions. And customers generally increase their food and drink spend around Christmas and make more specialist um, and drink purchases during the Christmas season. So it might be a nice way to, to encourage more customers to shop with you or new customers to shop with you. They see a nice gift and then they're like, wow, you do all these other things. And it could be the start of a, of a, of a, well, of a deeper relationship. So. Yeah, so Lewis is going to talk a bit more about gifting in her segment. So I'm going to move on here. And the other thing is thinking now about any promo materials that you might want for Christmas. So, for example, flyers or brochures or posters in your local shop. So if you think about it, there's lots of really amazing online tools that can help you design these yourself. Um, and you can print them out at home if you don't want to print them. Um, yeah, um, professionally, but have a think if there's anything that you want to do to help spread the word. And also, Think about I, like creative ideas that you can do on social media around Advent. And um, there's a really nice um, example, which again, Tamo Valley Food Hubs did last year, which was a countdown in sprouts from a local producer. And the sprouts were taken away one by one as this nice countdown to the last day of the order cycle. So this, this is like an example of, of definitely an entertaining post um, or series of posts. So it's just different things you can do. And it's the same, sometimes all it takes is sitting down with a pen and paper and giving this kind of 10 minutes to just come up with your own creative idea that can give, yeah. So it's just being confident about coming up with, with lovely creative ideas that you can try on social media that contain like a Christmassy theme that help you to kind of tap into what people are thinking about and what vibe people are on at this time. And also to prepare for a last minute rush. I'm not gonna talk about this here because this is definitely gonna come up in the rest of our um, session today. And then also my last tip here um, for Christmas marketing, which is to think ahead to January in, in December. So start to think about a January slump in advance. Um, and you could start thinking now about things you could offer in January to help with that. For example, free delivery fortnight, or it could be um, a refer a friend type offer or, so again, have a, have a think about different things you might be able to, to do in January to, to help with that slump after Christmas. And yeah, so it's just in these times, it's really important to focus on positive messaging with all of your marketing, be that through email or social media or even face-to-face. -face. Um, share excitement and enthusiasm with your customers. Look at, you know, look at, tell them, to, you know, show what you're doing, uh, sell the benefits of what you're doing and also your products and produce as well. Why should customers buy from you? Focus on shared values that you share with your customers and remember that they're also part of, your, of, of the food community. And most of your customers will really care about what you care about. Um, show how we're working together, share personal anecdotes on social media, make the most of your community and talk to your customers whenever and wherever you can. And that's it for my marketing tips. That's great, Kay. Thanks very much. Uh, we have a question from Sally. Sally, you were asking about social media sharing. Um, what exactly were you thinking about of like, if it's okay to share other people's stuff? 
it was just that is there an assumption that if somebody tags you in something as an organization you just have the right to sort of share and shout about it because I'm always a little bit reluctant especially if someone's share, you know they share something quite personal about their experience and you just think am I okay to now share this and say thank you that's amazing um or you know is that the general I don't really know what the general rule is around social media sharing and what people's attitude is to um to what you repost and you know, adding to your story and that sort of thing is not something I'm that familiar with. Yeah, I think that's that's because it is it's hard to know because it really depends on the person and the customer. So it's as a as a general rule, if someone tags you in a post as a, as an enterprise, then that is quite a fair like it's a fairly open. Um, yeah, it's it's a fairly open thing to do. Um, but if you're concerned I, before the customer relationship, I'd always err on the side of caution and just drop them a note and say, thank you so much for tagging us. Um, it's really helpful. We'd love to share your lovely words about us. Um, would you mind if I take this post and share it further or put it in our stories? And it's also that gives you another really great, I know it's one extra step to do, but it gives you a really nice extra touch point with your customer and will help to generate uh, more of a relationship. And also, even if they didn't mind, the fact that you've asked is just another kind of point of trust for them. So you've got an opportunity there um, to develop that relationship with that particular customer further by seeking their kind of consent or permission. And it really depends on the person. So there is no real general rule of thumb or kind of social etiquette, I'm afraid, but I'd always just use any opportunity to have a quick check in with your customer because it's a, it's a good thing for relationship building as well. Thank you. Yeah, I think the messaging thing's a great idea. I'll definitely do that. Thank you. Awesome. I'm Louise and I work for the OFN support team and I've um, talked to quite a lot of you before, especially if you've got an enterprise on OFN. And um, as well as doing support last year, I worked for a small business and I worked over Christmas. So I kind of know some of the things that might be going through your head or might ha happen in the next couple of months. So these slides are sort of some practical and logistical things that um, might happen and might help you. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that um, the slides will be available online afterwards. And so I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of how to do step by steps with the platform right now, because that probably bore half of you to death. Um, but you, the, there is the links in the slides for you to find out how to do these things. So um, don't worry about that. So the things I thought of um, covering were adding some sparkle to your branding, uh, which Kay mentioned before. Uh, planning your order cycles or when your shop front's going to be open, optimising your products, Christmas gifts, and then a few other extra logistical tips. So Kay mentioned this, but um, especially on social media and on your shop front, you might want to just add a little Christmas touch to your logo or your banner. Um, I know that quite a lot of people up, um, add like a festive snowflake or a Christmas tree or something to their logo, and then they might change their photo book banner to some Christmassy image over the period. Um, you can make this sort of the same on all platforms. So put the same banner, the same imaging on your Twitter and your Facebook and your Instagram, and then also on your FN shop front. Um, if you've not done this before, um, you can go to Facebook and you can do update your pitch profile and then add a frame. And they have some nice Christmas ones and they have more variety nearer the time too. Of course, you might want to create something of your own and um, there's much more flexibility with this. So you can look at Canva, which is a really nice online free software tool, which you can use. For thinking about your banner imaging, you might um, take a nice photo of some festive products that you sell. But if you don't have time to do that, or it's just not there now, um, because you haven't made your mince pies or whatever yet, then you can always look online and there's lots of free stock images and this, a Pixabay is a good source of one of them. Next thing is like planning your order cycles. Now, I'm aware that maybe not all of you um, are on the OFM platform and don't know what I mean by an order cycle because I think order cycle is fairly OFM jargon, as it were. Um, what we mean is that um, by an order cycle is the the period of time which your shop front is open for a customer to place um, an order. There's two ways which um, businesses use the OFM platform primarily. One of them is to have periodic order cycles. So uh, they might have their shop front open Monday to Wednesday, and then uh, uh, customers collect all their produce on a Saturday. It allows um, 
the, between Wednesday and Saturday, between the order cycle closing and the uh, customer collecting, it allows your bakers and makers and pickers and growers to get all their lovely fresh produce readily made, especially for the customer. The other way uh, which you can operate is sort of more traditionally, I guess, which is to have a continuously open shop front um, and then just say that if a customer places an order today, then they come and collect it, um, their order tomorrow or two days time, or your order will be posted out to them within a certain time period. Thinking about these two scenarios um, in the coming months, I mean, it's really good to plan now if you haven't done already, um, because not just you want to plan, but you'll probably find your customers will want to plan. So considering the first scenario of having like periodic um, order cycles, now this this week uh, this year, um, Christmas Day is on a Friday. So if you not your normal day of collection is on a Saturday or Sunday, can you fit in an extra collection date um, in that Christmas week? Maybe the twenty third or the twenty fourth, because um, especially for fresh produce, people want it as close to Christmas as possible. I know um, it, well, you, when you're coming up to December, it might be a good idea to open all your order cycles um, in, in sort of at the start of December. So your customers have a choice of when they want to collect. Certainly my mum will want to order her turkey and her um, vegetables at sort of early in December, but she won't want to collect it that week. She'll want to collect it much nearer the time. So just think like your customer, what, how can you make it easier for them? And then again, what, uh, do you know whether you're going to be open for have um, collection between Christmas and New Year? Let your customers know. You can add a notice to your shopfront um, notices page, as well as your social media and any newsletter that you send out. Because not only does this sort of um, allow, well, it's good communication to your customers to provide in general loyalty, but it also means that if you are going to be shut, the customers might want to order an extra I don't know, bottle of milk before Christmas because they need a bit more. The next scenario or the other scenario is a, a shop front which has a continuously continuously open. For this, um, remember that nearer Christmas, you're probably going to find you get a much vast increase in order demand. And can you, um, can you manage this order demand? So if your normal turnaround time is one day between a customer ordering and them coming to collect, can you still manage this if you get 100 orders in a day? So be realistic and maybe um, say you need to collect two days after ordering instead. The other th point, which is in association with this, is um, how close to Christmas can a customer order and still get their products for Christmas? Because believe it or not, when I work for an online business, people still order on Christmas Eve or and expect it for Christmas Day, which it really isn't. Um, you really can't do it unless you're superhuman. So therefore, shut your order cycle that day or two before Christmas, just to allow yourself time and not engender customer disappointment. Again, if you're going to um, post items out nationally rather than have people collect, then consider the cutoff dates for postage, um, which is the 18th and the 21st of December, and then add your last date for ordering, maybe a day or two before this, because you don't want to turn up on the 18th of um, December for second class delivery and realize that you've got 300 things to pack before noon to get it to the post office. You won't be able to do that. Thinking about your products, especially this year when um, customers were all advised to stay at home as much as possible and sort of limit our social contact. People want to get as much as they can in one shop and not have to visit lots of different places to collect their different items. So how can you diversify your product range to allow your customers to do this? This is a good time to just talk to people locally to see what they can offer you. Can they offer you some Christmas wreaths or some um, Christmas trees or some gift items? Or even can you get them, get a local um, local supplier to give you um, to supply you with toilet roll or to add to your product range with household items so that the customer doesn't have to visit multiple outlets? 
last week we saw the addition of photos on mobiles for um, shopping on at the RFM platform which, and there's also the platform has had a, a bit of a revamp so it all looks really nice and shiny and we're really excited about it so if you're adding photos to your products that are, are going on your plat uh, on your shop front try and crop them to one to one to one square dimensions or one to one because this will work best and if you don't have a the actual product in front of you to take a photo of then you can look online for stock images like i mentioned before you want to make your products as easy as possible for the customer to find them and buy them so make sure that all of your products um christmas products have the product pro property christmas added to them so you can use the the customer can use the filter bar on the right of the screen to find them similarly edit your products that uh, some Christmas overtone and make sure that you've added Christmas as the search word to the product so that if the customer uses the search box at the top of your shop they find them. Another point and we mentioned this in a webinar a couple of weeks ago so I won't dwell on it here but you can find information in the slides um, within link in the slides is you want to um, just review your product descriptions because your product description is what will convince that um, the customer who's umming and ahhing, shall I, shan't I buy this product, to put it in their basket and actually check out, because that's the point where you can sell how wonderful your product is. Thinking of gift items, gift items might be simple items that you have on your shop front every, every week anyway, because like, what is a lovely jar of honey? That could be a super gift or a bar of chocolate. But you might also have um, want to add to your range specifically for gifts like winter wreaths or flower arrangements or um, local homeware, uh, handcrafted homeware or knitwear, etc. Another lovely gift that you could put together is a hamper. So you might want to um, approach a couple of your suppliers and see if they can um, group together and organise a hamper. Hampers take a little bit of time to organise and they can be a bit tricky maybe to sort out how who gets paid what at the end but they are really really worthwhile as a kind of marketing thing for your hub because say if person a buys a, um, the hamper and gives it to person b and if person a shops your hub anyway they're a loyal customer but person b might not have ever shopped at your hub but they receive this wonderful hamper and then they think oh i might have a look at that hub um, at that outlet after Christmas and then you've in increased your customers. If you're thinking of uh, people wanting to buy things as gifts, people will buy things as gifts earlier than their shop for their Christmas day food. So expect sort of a gift surge or gift demands to increase sort of mid December and then Christmas day food much closer to Christmas day. This year, a nice touch might be to offer to be able to deliver uh, the gifts to the recipient, um, especially for elderly or vulnerable customers. Have a think with your team. Can you do this? Um, is it what the barriers to doing this? Could you offer national shipping when you don't normally, just for this one-off? Um, if you don't normally offer national shipping and you've not got something set up, considering checking out Drop Point, the UFN ha um, has a relationship with them. So social enterprises on our platform can get reduced cost um, delivery. Can you offer gift wrapping as a service? Um, can you add a, a little message with gifts, um, which can be customizable? Vouchers and gift subscriptions. I think um, there's been a trend towards these type of things in general, I think over the last couple of years, certainly I get them for my Christmas presents more and more these days. Um, I actually think gift subscriptions this year will be a really big thing because um, if you offer a gift subscription, especially with it using the OFM platform, the person buying the gift can then spread the cost of that gift over the coming month or months. So they, they're paying a small amount for their friend or family to get a loaf of bread or um, some freshly, fresh um, vegetable box every week for say two, week, uh, two months, whatever they, de you, they decide. And they don't have to pay for all of this upfront which is especially um, important this year when people have cash flow problems with the economic times. Now, this is my brainstorm of other things you might want to think of. So um, 
some Christmas products like Christmas cakes, I take months to make. And um, it, probably people who are making Chris, Christmas cakes have already started long ago, making the cake and then feeding it with alcohol and then not icing it, etc. So you might not open an order cycle with these items now and get advance payments and advance orders because it's not something that can be made at, um, like in December. It's always better to sell out of something than to have set um, your stock levels to infinite and then have to disappoint customers and have to decide who gets what because you've oversold. So look at your stock levels and if you're not sure, set it to a reasonable level. Don't put it as infinite. Similarly, consider how many deliveries you can realistically make. You were, we are all human and there are only 24 hours in the day in that last week. If it is 100 and shut your order cycle when you've got that 100 order, don't take more orders because you're just, um, you won't be able to fulfill them necessarily. Don't neglect your everyday products. Everyone wants milk, bread, um, toilet roll, soap, etc. So make sure you can offer these as well as seasonal produce. If you're gonna think do national postage, especially if you don't normally do it, think about getting your um, packaging because that's something you need to get now. And as Kay mentioned before, um, this is your period to sort of attract your customers to make them remember you after Christmas as well. So you might wanna run a little social media campaign to say, Look, if you spend X now, we can um, you can get a little bit of a discount after Christmas. And the steps to how to implement this in the slides, which I'll share with you. Um, sort of to engender um, customer goodwill. And also, because we are who we are, it's always good to look out for those who are less well advantaged in your com local community. What can you do? Can you? like spread a bit of this Christmas cheer to someone, um, donate leftover food produce to a homeless shelter or um, a food bank. And also don't forget your staff and volunteers. They're gonna be like run off their feet maybe in these coming months, maybe just give them that little bit of a reward. That was really interesting. I just, I know that I was, there's so many angles that I hadn't thought about. So um, thanks for saving me, but. Uh, there's a few questions and uh, I would suggest we go through them before going to Nick so that it kind of goes uh, sort of like if someone else has any questions, it's all contained within the same aspect. So the first question is, is it possible to add a Christmas category on OFN rather than just have it as a property? I'm repeating. No, at the moment we can't add to product categories. You can add it as a product property though. And the, the search thing on the side um, is the same. So it does mean that you can have, um, every product can only have one, belong to one category. So a Christmas cake, you really want it to be in the product category of bread and baking, but then you can add as many properties as you want. So your Christmas cake will have the property of Christmas, but it might, if it's special, it might be a vegan cake, it might be a gluten-free cake, it might be produced within 15 miles. So you can add as many of these as, as you want. Super. There's a very practical question from Alistair, and it's when do people start adding Christmas pictures to their shop front? Um, were you talking about um, sort of like your logo and your Christmas banner, um, or were you talking about Christmas products? Because... Um, and I suppose for either, really, it's um, what it's personal choice. It's like it's a similar question of when do you put up your Christmas tree? I know people who will put up their Christmas tree in September if they could, and others that will put it up right before. I think um, I don't want to say either way because it, it'd be my personal opinion. Um, I don't know. This year, oh, yeah. maybe Sorry. because we're all a bit miserable, put it up earlier. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it was just a question because I, I get a bit grumpy when I see um, Christmas <laughs> decorations in shops, but I know I'm not. You, I may not be normal, so I was just wondering when other what when do other people is now about the right time to start? Do you think? Um, Would you I like a view from the Tamar? Yes, please. Um, so we came up with a plan this week to drip feed our new Christmas products. 
So every week we're going to have something new for people to pre-order or to think about or um, so this week, this week in our newsletter, it will be a pre-order opportunity for Christmas poultry and um, gammons. Then next week we're going to have some, start, you know, talking about gifts like our hampers and we're getting some um, calendars from Land Workers Alliance. Um, so starting to talk about gifty things. And then every week as we go through, you know, Christmas cakes, then mince pies then so it's a bit of, of a drip feed here in the Tamar. That's a really good idea. Um, finally, uh, can you can you order can an order cycle be more than a month? Yes, certainly can. Yeah. Good to know. And then a really nice comment from Candence and Pantry who are saying that they've had great feedback about the new shop. So well done. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Sally has a really uh, a very specific questions there. How do you limit your customer numbers? Is there something, some way to do it on your on the on the platform? Do you mean how many orders you got for a particular cycle um, order cycle? Well, I suppose you could. I imagine. Sally, do you want to? Yeah, just how many, you know, say, because for us, we'd say, well, we're probably cut off at about 80 customers. And I haven't ever done that before because we've never got to that level. So how do I say, oh, you know, the 80th, you know, the 79th person or whatever would be the last person that can order? You wouldn't, you can't set a limit, um, an automatic limit. You'd have to keep an eye on it if you thought that you were going to get close to that. And then you can go to the um, orders page on your OFN admin and just um, sort by order cycle. And you can, because you can view sort of like uh, 10 or 15 orders per page, you can see how many pages you've got but for that order cycle to count how many orders. So you could do it that way. Lovely. Um, yeah, no, that's fine. So we just keep an eye. Um, can I just go back to the previous question? Because when I also asked about the Christmas button, and I don't really understand what the product property is compared to the category. Where do I find that? Is that just on a link somewhere? Um, yeah, there's a link in the slides. Um, and also, if you go to the um, user guide and search for product properties, it will tell you how to get into thank that. Um, I think that's the quickest way to tell you now without yep, giving you a screenshot. You. That's fine. Cheers. I'm not sure if anybody has any questions that they would like to ask it loud, but Helen here has a question that will lead us perfectly into the next topic, which is more about the platform itself. And it's whether there's a function in OFN to alert you when a new when a customer orders for the first time, just um, aligning with the idea of making sure that you actually have that first customer interaction. Uh, that's a good question. Louise, you might be better placed to answer that than me, but um, as far as I understand it, every time um, a new order is placed, the um, the customer will receive an email confirming the order, and also the manager of the shop front will also receive an email every time an order is placed. Um, there isn't, as far as I know, any functionality that tells you if this is somebody who's new to the shop front, um, but I think Louise might be able to, to clarify that. Um, no, as far as I know, there isn't a way of knowing that if your customer is new to your shop front. But again, I think this is probably something that we could offer as an integration if it was something that someone wanted. So whoever asked, please do drop us an email and um, I'm pretty sure that would be manageable to do and implement if it was something of interest. There you go, Helen. Problem solved. Pardon? Problem solved for Helen. Just, uh, I'm seeing okay. her sort of like just smiling. So, <laughs> Nick, do you want to give us a brief introduction to OFN so that afterwards Louise can actually um, yep. walk us through the platform and the benefits for Christmas? Yeah, absolutely. Happy to do that. And Helen, we're really happy to talk to you more about that issue about new customers. You know, we'll 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 find a way around it for you. Um, so the I'm hoping you can see my screen now. Uh, the the picture on the screen is is the link that. I in the chat earlier. Uh, you can all see that as part of the public uh, OFN site. Um, various ways that people use OFN. Uh, some people will be farmers and growers who just want to be visible on the Open Food Network. Uh, they will set themselves up, they will put up their contact details, uh, some images, 
um, some details about how they farm and what they produce. Uh, they can put products up there. But they that's all they want to do is just to be sort of registered as part of the network and visible on the network. Um, they also may want to sell their produce, but not necessarily have the administration of running an online shop front themselves, but they, they want to supply other shops with, with their products. They're what we call a profile only. They, they pay nothing at all to be part of the Open Food Network. We want as many of those as possible. We've got thousands of them already across the UK, uh, but the, the more farmers and growers and processors and producers we've got, the, the richer the network. So these people join the network for free. Um, some of them may decide that they then want to sell direct to, to the farmers to, from, from their farm or from their, wherever they're producing food um, and sell direct to, to shoppers and buyers. And they will be what we call a producer shop and they will, they will um, start to sell the Open Food Network. They will start to take payments online. Uh, they, will, they will have various distribution methods. They might be able to offer pickup from the farm. Uh, OFN has various social distancing systems that we've set up to enable people to pick up from pickup points with a time slot so that people are, um, are given a, um, a particular time to pick up and that allows us to, to distance at the pickup points. And also they may well want to do home delivery and then charge a bit extra for, for home delivery. But they, they may just be a, a producer selling their own produce uh, through the Open Food Network and then we ask them to start paying a contribution of 2.4 percent of the online turnover to to open food network um, the third stage is that as well as selling their own products they might want to start selling products from other people and then we have this concept of a hub a bit like a, a, a bicycle wheel you have lots of lots of producers selling through a single shop front and um, it may be that's a, a farm or a, or a production producer who's selling from other producers in the local area or it might be a, a, a food hub like the one that I help to run in, in Stroud, which is actually not producing anything at all. It's a virtual organisation. We, we use a church hall on a Saturday morning as, as our distribution point, uh, but we are a cooperative of 85 different local food producers who all sell through one shop front. Um, and we, we, we do all of the sort of uh, processing of orders, taking of payments and, and sorting out of, of the orders on behalf of those shoppers. So that's a very quick whistle stop tour through the options. Uh, this is what the Open Food Network looks like in terms of the map and you can you can find that on our website foodnetwork.org.uk. Um, you can you can zoom in and, and find out about a particular producer or a particular shop uh, by clicking on the icon. Or you can come to our shops tab and see the various different shops that are open on the Open Food Network and search by uh, location or name of the, of, the, of the shop front. And in a moment, we're going to be talking to Rosie from Bowhouse, uh, who is part of the team managing this particular shop front. So this is a classic Open Food Network shop front. Um, you can see the, see the various products down here. Uh, you can filter by the type of product. Uh, you might want to be find out a bit more about a particular product. You can click on that and see a bit more detail. And we're very much into transparency, so we want the shoppers to be able to. See. So as well as clicking on the product details, you can click on the producer details and find out a bit more about the producer and about. You can see pictures of where they grow their produce. You can find out a bit more detail about them. Uh, you can follow them on social media, you can contact them. So we, we want the shoppers to be able to make connections with the producers. And again, in terms of transparency against every product, you can see the price of the product and you can see of that price, how much is going to the producer and how much the hub is taking as an admin charge, as a markup. Um, I'm not going to go into an awful lot of detail. There's a huge amount in the back end that I could talk about, but I, the, we're a bit off topic here. And I've squeezed this slot in amongst other things, uh, but that's what it looks like. So the shopper in the back end, there's loads of different reports and uh, processing information that the that the, the manager of the shop front can, can access. If, if there's any questions, we might have time for one or two questions now. If not, uh, please put your questions in the chat and I will make sure I contact you later and, and follow up on that. I'll hand over back to Anna. 
That's great. Uh, I see the other Anna raising her hand. So, <laughs> yeah, I've got a question. Um, is there any integration between OFN, uh, the, 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 the online um, platform, and um, existing EPOS? We've got a physical shop as well, and managing stock between the two would be difficult. So if I know I've got 20 kilos of carrots, I need to know that um, I need the stock level on the on the on the um, OFN platform to be reducing as I sell them in the physical shop. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is a, this is a common question. Uh, we are working with several farm shops, particularly since lockdown. Uh, that that has been a, a very normal process for people to want to integrate a regular shop with with the Open Food Network. Um, we have got an API uh, which allows integration with with other softwares, which we use a lot. And depending on your EPOS system, um, we, we will be able to find a way to, to link the two together so that as you sell from the physical shop, that will reduce the stock on the Open Food Network shop front so that you don't double sell any item um, and, and vice versa. So that as online sales go through, you know that that stock is no longer available uh, in the shop. Um, we will need to talk in a, a bit more detail about exactly what EPOS you're using and how we do that integration, but it is something that we've tackled quite a lot in the last few months, so happy okay. to, to explore Thank that. You. Yeah. And we have another question that, again, is going to lead us perfectly into Louisa's uh, presentation, and it's from Kathy, and she's asking whether you can use OFN customer emails to send a newsletter. Do you want to pick up on that, Louise? Or, no, but, I, mean, I can do this. It's yeah, very simple. Lots of people use use a, a regular integration that we've got that links the Open Food Network with Mailchimp, and anybody who places an order on the Open Food Network, we we automatically collect their their contact details, and you, as the manager of your shopfront, have access to your customer details on the Open Food Network, and you can dump those down into Mailchimp and then send a mailing when you open a new order cycle to tell people that the orders are now open, when the order cycle is about to close, you could send an email just reminding them that they've got, you know, uh, two hours before the order cycle closes. So yes, you, you do, you, we have got integrations with MailChimp and other, other CRM systems. But yeah, I'll hand over to Louise in case she wants to add anything to that or get on with her presentation. I believe there's a blog on um, uh, on our blog on our, on the website that explains how to do this. So um, yeah, do take a look at our blog and search down to file about Mailchimp, and then um, you'll get more information. A more practical one from Helen asking if we can put a link for how to write a great product description, either now or in the mail. We'll make sure to include that, Helen. So don't worry. Uh, just to make sure that you have it. And then the second question that Helen had was about vouchers. So about vouchers, if the, um, if the option has been developed uh, any further since two months ago, because at the moment they're using uh, the workaround on a credit on the account, but it's quite clunky to use. So. Yeah, um, there is, the, it, nothing has changed in the last two months. Um, vouchers are, a bit of a workaround at the moment. It is something that our development team have got on their wish list, um, and we really hope that we'd be able to offer it in the future. Um, I think as a gift idea, I would really go for a subscription as a gift rather than a voucher through the OFN platform, because it's simpler for you to process. And I think this year in particular, it does have benefits to the customer and the recipient as well. And then finally, Susie had asked um, if we can have an order cycle that is longer than, than a month. And I think that yesterday you mentioned that, yes, that we could. Yeah, that's certainly possible. You can have um, a continuously order, uh, open order cycle. So it's, it's perfectly possible now to set up an order cycle that's open for three years if you should want to. I don't know that you'd necessarily want to, but yeah. <laughs> you could. Good to know.